So this is going to be a tutorial where I show you how to make a super saw synth in Reason um, using a subtractor oscillators. Uh, this is what, it, this is some of the sounds that you can get out of it. So yeah, that's the basic sound. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with it uh, beyond what I did here, but uh, with a pretty simple patch you can get some big sounds. So anyways, let's get started. Open up a new window of Reason. Uh, I'm going to start with a mixer, uh, the large mixer, the 14.2. Um, and the reason I do this is uh, because we're going to be plugging in four subtractors in together and I just prefer this mixer to the smaller mixer. Um, so once I create that, uh, I'm going to create a subtractor and I'm going to hold Option or Alt um, and click and drag uh, to duplicate it and I'm going to select those two devices and then click and drag again uh, to get a total of four. Um, once I have that, then I need to plug them in. I hit tab to flip around to the back, plug in the outputs of each one into a new channel of the mixer. Uh, one thing to note, are these these are mono, um, and so just be aware of that if you're going to try and mess around with panning or something here. Um, yeah, and they're mono coming out of the subtractor, so. Um, it's not that necessary. Um, so the next thing is throwing it into a combinator and you do that by selecting the first device, in this case it's the mixer, and then we go down to the bottom device and hold shift and click it, and that will select all the devices in between. Um, now that they're all selected, I right click and hit combine. This will put them all in a combinator, um, and right now uh, Basically, we have a combinator, and if we try and play it, it's playing all four Thors. You can see it in the mixer, uh, but it doesn't sound all that interesting because they're all tuned exactly the same, and there's only four oscillators happening currently. Um, so to make it uh, actually sound cool, <laughs> we're going to start by turning the oscillator 2 of each device on, and then we're going to start detuning them. So uh, you can detune them by different amounts. Um, I personally uh, have found that uh, detuning by increments of four sounds good. Um, so uh, doing this first one to 16, uh, this next one we do to 12, um, and then to eight, and then four, and then negative four, and then negative eight, negative 12, and then negative 16 for the final one. And if I play it now, it still sounds a little funky, um, and that's mainly because the, uh, there's a filter on it. Uh, also, the uh, filter envelope is being affected by the velocity that we play the keys, and I, I don't actually want that in this case, so I'm gonna uh, turn that off on each one of these devices. And then, um, Instead of automating four separate filter uh, frequency sliders and four separate envelope amounts and four separate filter uh, decays, I'm going to set it up so that uh, these control those for all the devices. You, the way you do that is you go into the programmer and you select the subtractor one, uh, rotary one, we are going to have control of the filter frequency. Rotary two, uh, we're going to have filter amount, rotary 3, we're going to have filter decay, and we're going to do that uh, for each Thor instance. Uh, frequency, amount, decay, again, frequency, amount, decay, 
K and the last one frequency amount decay okay and now that we have that uh, we should be able to control it up here and if I bring up this rotary which is the photo frequency sounds pretty good um, that's really the basis of it. Uh, the rest of it is starting to add different types of effects and uh, enhancing the sound a little bit. Um, one thing that I like to do is I like to name these knobs. So you just double click and then you could rename it. So this would be uh, filter frequency. Uh, and then this next one will be uh, envelope amount. And then this next one will be uh, the envelope decay. This currently isn't anything, and these buttons aren't anything, so uh, I just like to delete them. Um, this last one we'll probably have as a reverb uh, dry wet later on, but for now it's nothing. Um, and yeah. Uh, so that's that. Next is uh, adding some sort of, uh, I, I like adding a limiter in here. So maximizer, um, we're going to have the output of the mixer go into the limiter and then go in back into the combinator. And um, that just brings up the volume and makes sure that you uh, don't I'll have any clipping. Sounds good. Uh, that's that. Uh, and then finally, actually, uh, before we have the maximizer, I'm going to do a reverb. Um, so I'm going to bring in uh, RV7 digital reverb and plug it in just before the, um, the maximizer and um, bring down the dry wet. The size is probably a little bit big. I'm bringing out the size a little bit. And you can just adjust these settings to your liking. Um, maybe, yeah, that's fine. Um, and then I'll go into the programmer again, select the reverb, go to rotary and have dry wet. So now this is our dry wet knob. Oops, dry wet. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Um, so in the example, uh, all I was doing was automating these different knobs. Um, so to get a nice plucky sound, you bring down the filter frequency, and you have the envelope amount up and the decay down a little bit. Anyways, it's really fun, and uh, hopefully you got something out of it. Thanks.